So, thinking about retiring overseas? What if something goes wrong? Do you have a disaster plan? That's what we're going to talk about today. So stick around. All right, guys. So, hey, before we get started, real quick, please be sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It'll help the channel. And don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss an upload. Let's get on with our video. All right, YouTube friends, welcome back. Another edition of USA to Philippines Life Channel with me, Mike, your host. Today we're going to talk a little bit about a disaster plan, having a disaster plan. So Money Talk News put out an article. They actually put it out in 2014. Looks like they reposted it back in December of this year. Uh, do not retire abroad until you answer these seven questions. So in this video, we're going to take a little bit of a look at those seven questions because I think they're very good. It actually got me to thinking a little bit, especially about the disaster plan. Now, that has crossed my mind. I talked about the what ifs uh, in a previous video, uh, which got a lot of love. I appreciate that. Uh, if you've not watched it yet, I'll put it in the description, a link to that video. Um, the what ifs of uh, retiring in the Philippines and uh, you know, hey, some of them are very valid. And after reading this article that I'm going to share with you today, having a disaster plan, and not just for China and you know, possible conflicts in the region, all the what ifs that we talked about and I talked about in the previous video, I think would warrant having some kind of a disaster plan. So, you know, that's definitely something valid in here. So let's take a look at these seven questions that Money Talk News is suggesting that we ask ourselves prior to retiring abroad. So as always, I will put a link to this article in the description and give them full credit and so that you can read it in depth because I'm not going to read it word for word. I'm just going to share it, uh, the seven questions. We'll talk a little bit about each one. You just want to make sure that you analyze the place that you're going and try to think of things that potentially could go wrong uh, so that you can try to anticipate them and, you know, plan for them in advance. And as I mentioned in the intro, disaster plan. Now that's the big one. This is what grabbed me. I'm going to read a little bit of it from the article for you. Uh, but again, I encourage you to go back and read the uh, read this article uh, full. It's pretty good and definitely thought-provoking, as I said earlier. It's hard to read cues in another culture. Don't assume a place is dangerous or safe from appearance alone. And bone up on current issues and have a backup plans in case of trouble. Uh, that's definitely true and that's definitely something that my wheels are turning you know, as the time grows near, I'm definitely going to have some kind of escape plan if I decide that I need to come back to the States, which I hope never happens. And I definitely would not come back to this area if I have to come back here. But uh, definitely research your destination, uh, make use of uh, the U.S. government, the State Department's office, um, American Citizen Services and Crisis Management has detailed current information about crime, kidnapping, civil unrest by country and often by city. So make use of those U.S. government resources that have all the information of current, um, you know, safety threat levels um, that you would need, should know before you even travel abroad. I know um, each time that I've gone to the Philippines, I've registered my trip with the U.S. State Department uh, just in case something crazy happened. They knew I was there, um, you know, so I recommend doing that. Uh, I know some folks may say, nope, I don't want the government knowing what I'm doing, but uh, I chose to do that. And uh, you definitely, I would say to, uh, you know, stay registered with them if you're living abroad. Um, uh, this some good information here. Carry emergency uh, contact information. Keep a paper copy of your emergency contact numbers in your wallet. Also, add 
your emergency contact information to the spot provided in your passport. Consider using the State Department's Smart Traveler Enrollment Program to store your location information so a U.S. Embassy or consulate can reach you or your emergency contacts if necessary. And that's what I was talking about earlier, about uh, using the U.S. State Department's uh, resources that they have. And what, there's another one that you hear all the time, even when you're traveling. Copy your passport, photocopy the data page of your passport, and give it with your emergency contact information to one or two people you trust, one in your new home and another in the U.S. Uh, so I know I have a relative here who I would uh, keep in touch with and have all these uh, you know safety nets like that set up with. Uh, have communication plans. Designate someone to be your family's contact in an emergency. Even when local phones aren't working, you may be able to call outside your area if you become separated from family or friends in a disaster or emergency. Everyone can report in your central contact who relays messages. So again, this is really good information, um, not only just for <laughs> retirement and moving abroad, you know, just having an extended trip abroad, and if you're new to uh, world traveling, you definitely want to um, think about some of this stuff. Uh, even if you're not going to the Philippines, I mean, you know, li listen, things happen. Uh, things happen unexpectedly. Uh, so definitely, you know, have a plan for the unexpected. I expect the unexpected, like you never know when stuff's going to happen. And then we'll, I'm just going to read the, the last several. I'm not going to get into them. Are you realistic about real estate is number three. You know, as we talked about the Philippines uh, cost of living in previous videos. Can you afford it? We looked at the Investopedia uh, article about retiring in the Philippines. And uh, they were pretty thorough. And I encourage everybody to go back and check that video and read that article. It really gets into uh, in depth about real estate and you know, renting versus owning, uh, you know, the fact that foreigners can't own property there, but, you know, we can own structure, we can own a structure, and we can long-term lease the property, so there's ways around all of that, uh, but uh, definitely, if you're not up on all of that stuff, and a lot of guys are, uh, definitely continue to gather your intel as the time approaches for your departure to your new home uh, number four have you met with your accountant definitely important uh, US citizens um, I would imagine for Canadians uh, Brits our friends in Great Britain Australia and any other European countries I would assume have similar issues with uh, accounting taxation um, as it pertains I know uh, even though we retire U.S. citizens to a foreign country, we are still required to pay taxes to the United States. Um, so definitely want to discuss that with your accountant before uh, you're going. I know uh, I will start mentioning it to mine uh, now as we start to get closer and closer to our departure. Um, definitely something that you want to prepare properly for. Right, number five, are you up on U.S. financial reporting laws? In recent years, the U.S. government has imposed two complex rules that affect Americans who live or bank abroad. Um, they are report of foreign bank and financial accounts uh, and the IRS Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. So they give a little more details on it in the article here. It's probably something else you should bone up on. Uh, before you consider uh, and plan to live abroad. Uh, number six, very, this is probably one of the most important things, how you manage your finances. Um, you know, and the consensus seems to be uh, the way to do that all is to keep your money in the United, in the U.S. banks, not in one single bank, but maybe depending on how much money you got more than one bank um, and transfer as you need it open an account in your country check there before if it's not the Philippines I know you can open a bank account in the Philippines um, 
and you would transfer funds to that account as needed and then they would issue you a debit card there that you could use uh, but you also want to have different safety nets uh, I know a lot of the guys over there uh, use uh, services such as Western Union uh, maybe remitly uh, to uh, transfer money to themselves um, in case there's a problem with the banking but I would as a rule set an amount of working cash that you have on hand and if you dip into that emergency fund that's when you know you have to replenish it because you know this way you know you got a month's worth of cash on hand uh, in case of an emergency to float you um, to see what's going on uh, with things but uh, definitely look into all of that notice a lot of good videos on YouTube uh, expats that are living overseas right now they have some great tips I know a lot of the guys talk about Charles Schwab account for banking through them uh, they seem to like that bank myself I'm looking at uh, US banks that have branches in the Philippines such as Citibank um, Wells Fargo uh, so I'm looking at that Capital One so I'm looking at those as possible um, choices um, of using banks like that so that if you needed to you could go to Manila where those branches are and uh, go walk into a branch but you need to research all that beforehand so definitely managing your finances is extremely high on the list of things and definitely a question you want to ask yourself number seven health care how will you pay for health care that's almost equally as important I know um, that's definitely it was in the what ifs video that I did it was in the what ifs video that I did and rightfully so um, Medicare does not cover health care outside the US uh, so you need to uh, weigh out how you're gonna deal with health issues because if you are a retiree you will have them uh, so definitely think that out there's a lot of different uh, options out there there's supplemental plans if you're married to a Filipino you can uh, buy into the PhilHealth although I hear it doesn't cover too much uh, my wife see, is in the camp of self-insure for those of you on a tighter budget you might want to think of something else uh, looking into one of these supplemental uh, policies I know there's other vloggers that talk about them um, I will be doing a little homework and I will do a video on that as well uh, down the road I prepare for my own retirement uh, and I will share the intel that I get with all of you so with that we're going to wrap up today's video the seven questions you should ask yourself before retiring abroad i hope it was thought provoking for you if you're new to this or maybe not so new to this and it was still thought provoking so we really appreciate you stopping by we'd be grateful if you gave the video a like if you enjoyed it or even more grateful if you're not a subscriber and you would consider doing so today with that we're going to wrap this one up as we always like to say Wherever you are in the world, stay well, stay safe, stay blessed, and we'll be back real soon with another video. Thank you very much for watching.